We can talk to Damien Stone now, who's from the steering committee of Keep Our NHS Public in Dorset. And Debbie Monkhouse as well, uh, who we've spoken to on the show before. Debbie lives in Swanage. She has COPD and she's been campaigning against these changes. Uh, Damien, uh, Debbie, good morning to both of you. Hello. Good morning. Damien, let's start with you. Uh, your response to what you've seen of these consultation responses? Well, I, I think it's important to say that the consultation was conducted against the background of austerity. So as far as I'm concerned, we've now moved on from that. And, and I think a lot of this talk is rather irrelevant. You now. think austerity is... To, I mean, my understanding of this, uh, the, the main thing was about public safety. If you can concentrate resources and expertise in, in one base, say for A&E or acute hospital, then you can get the, the best results for patients. I, do, I, I think Tim Goodson has been saying that Dorset needs to um, save £150 million. Now, as far as I'm concerned... Since we've had that general election, there is an alternative plan on the table, and it's to say that you don't have to choose between Hospital A and Hospital B. Uh, the new alternative plan is to keep both A and B. So, so I see it as largely irrelevant now. I think they've lost the moral authority to close any hospital in this country, and I think that's the way people are moving publicly. I think they've had enough of cuts um, cuts led to the crisis in the NHS at Christmas. Cuts have probably led to the, the um, fire yesterday in the tower block. The public mood is to move against aus aus austerity. Theresa May herself has said that austerity is over. So Tim Goodson needs to reconsider this plan, kick it into the long grass until after the next general election. Yeah, I'm, and I'm I hope guessing the direction of travel for the CCG is that they still have got this mandate that money needs to be saved. But, you know, as I say, that's not the, from what we're told, that's not the primary driving factor for these changes. So you'd like to see the CCG uh, prevaricate until such a time as they're told by central government that they don't have to save that kind of money. I did, I did, absolutely. I mean, I'd love it if you could get Tim Goodson back in the studio and you I'm, say sure, I'm him, sure we will. Well, OK. And ask him the question. If somebody came up to you tomorrow and said, here's £150 million to plug the gap, would you still continue closing our hospitals? Uh, giving people a choice between closing either Bournemouth or Poole Hospital, or at least the a and &E, &E, yeah. It's not the choice that people want to have to make. So you, you do a consultation, you turn around and say, well, some people want that one to close, some people want that one to close. That was the only choice they were offered, but we've now moved on from that. Okay. And if he insists on going ahead with the cuts, even if somebody offers him the money to plug the gap, then it must be ideological. Uh, uh, ideological. Well, it, it, no, it, it could be to do with the fact, as I say, if you concentrate expertise in one of those places, you might get better outcomes.